Hi everybody, welcome back. So, about a year and a half ago, maybe a little more, I think it was January of 2019, I made a video titled, Cheap $7 All Metal Hot End for Your Ender 3. And that video is still my most watched and commented on video, even though it is back from January 2019. Unfortunately, I made a couple of mistakes in that video. There were some things I left out. Some of the mistakes were just brain farts. I really do know better. And some of the other mistakes, well, had I really thought about it, I should have known better, but apparently I didn't at the time. So, and there were some things I should have covered and didn't. So in this video, I kind of want to correct those mistakes, and I kind of want to, um, to add in the things I didn't cover before now that I have actually had an all-metal hot end and been using it for since January 2019. So first off, let's cover the mistakes. Oh, and I want to thank the people who did make the comments, even the snarky ones. You're absolutely right. Those were mistakes. And thanks for the guy who has posted the link to the $7 all-metal hot end, which is now even prettier and only $3.80 some odd cents. That's in the comments of the original video, which I will put in the cards. You'll see it pop up above. And um, I will also put it in this one. And of course, the problem with, with links on AliExpress, they don't tend to be good for more than a week or two at a time. So I'll put that up there. Hopefully it's still good. And if you want one for four bucks or a dozen of them for four bucks, you can get one. So let's cover the mistakes. One of the things I said in the other one was to put Teflon tape in here and in a couple other places maybe to prevent the molten filament from squeezing out. Don't put Teflon tape in these, okay? Just don't do it. It's obviously dumb. I, I shouldn't have said it. You can't go back and correct YouTube videos anymore, so there's that. The other thing I said, which is probably wrong, was to put heat sink paste in it. Your average heat sink paste designed for computers is not designed to take 260 to 300 C in temperature. While I still don't think it would be harmful to put a good heat sink paste on the threads of the nozzle, I'm not sure that it's really doing you any good. And keep in mind that the thin part in between here, we call the heat break in the center, that's designed to prevent heat from going from the heat block to here. So we actually don't want to promote heat transfer in that place. So don't do that. It, it really isn't necessary. So. That pretty much covers, I think, the two most egregious mistakes I made in the other one. Um, if you can think of any others, let me know, and maybe in maybe maybe a year and ten months from now, when I make the next video, I'll correct them again. So, moving on from there, I want to cover some of the basics because I've gotten a lot of questions about what is an all-metal hot end and what isn't an all-metal hot end. Here's the original hot end off my Ender 3. People will look at it and say, well, geez, it's all-metal. Why isn't it an all-metal hot end? Well, let me show you. This is not an all-metal hot end. This is. So I'm just going to temporarily take the Bowden tube fitting off and take the nozzles off each of them, and I will show you why one is called an all-metal hot end and one is not an all-metal hot end. Here is the Bowden tube that would go in it. Here is the original Ender 3, which is not an all-metal hot end. There you go. In a not all-metal hot end, the Teflon Bowden tube is designed to push down and butt all the way up against the base of the nozzle. So pretty much you are covered with Teflon tube the whole distance, all the way up to the base of the nozzle. And it's another reason, let me see if I can get this closer and get it to focus. It's another reason, let me get rid of the hot end off of there. It's another reason why it is so important to have a, a cutter that will cut you a nice flush end. Because if you don't, you wind up with a gap. Well, if I can get you to see it, a gap where that angle is in between where the Bowden tube is and the, um, and the nozzle is. If any place molten filament can squeeze out, it will, and then you're going to get a jam. So get yourself one of these or something similar. These cost about three bucks. If you go down and buy them at Lowe's or Home Depot, they're probably 15, but, and then all that is going to do is give you a super nice square cut and it's not going to crush it. So these are worth their weight in gold if you have a, and even if you have an all-metal hot end, you don't want to crush, you don't want to crush the Bowden tube 
melted when you cut it. So, notice here on the all metal hot end, where it goes in, this is how far the Bowden tube goes. Right to there. It won't go any further. From, from that much downward, from here on downward, the Bowden tube does not go. The hole down the center is only the size or slightly bigger than the size of the filament. It is supported by metal the whole distance, where in this one, it is supported by Bowden tube the whole distance. So, because this one does not have any Teflon tube down its full length, that means you don't have that super slick surface of the Teflon tube. When you retract into this, you're retracting into metal and not into Teflon tube, which is one of the reasons why you have to cut your retraction settings way, way down, or you have to use an oiler to try and get that filament slick enough where it can be retracted that distance without jamming. Talking about jamming, there are some tools that you might find interesting and helpful to have. The first is the ubiquitous, I don't know if you can even see it, nozzle cleaner. It's designed to go into the tip of the nozzle. This one has filament in it, so it's not going to go. It's designed just to clean the nozzle. Once it gets past the tip, as you can see, it's way too tiny to do any cleaning in here. I forget where I got this tool from. It came with a printer. I forget which one. I've only got one of them, and it is designed to clean it is, this is the, the, the width of the filament, so it's designed to clean any place where we can have filament. So it goes all the way down through this, and it fits fairly snugly. Now, a tool that I made that I found to be super useful for non-all-metal hot ends, and I made this out on my little Harbor Freight mini lathe out of aluminum, a chunk of aluminum I had, it is the size of the Bowden tube up to here, and then the size of the Bowden tube fitting, not counting the threads, up to there. So it goes in like that, and down like that, and it pushes filament, can you see it? It pushes filament all the way down to the base of the nozzle. So I can heat it up with a, a small hand torch, a butane lighter, or whatever, and I, or heat it up with the, the thing, the, the heater cartridge itself, and I can push any molten filament that's in that, that's preventing the Bowden tube from going all the way in, I can push it all the way down and force it out of the end of the nozzle. Because one thing that's very, very important with these is that when you put the Bowden tube in, it actually goes down till it jams up against the base of the nozzle. If it doesn't, if it stands off, you are going to get jams and till you're blue in the face and jams are no fun to clear at all. So, next step, how do we assemble one of these? So, let's let's go ahead and pop it apart for now. Should have got a better wrench for this and had it ready, but I didn't. So, let's just pop these screws out. These screws seem to be another somewhat controversial controversial thing. You'll notice on the Creality one, can you see it? They left those screws in place. And um, I have had people tell me that they should only be there while you assemble it and tighten the nozzle. After that, you can take them out. Now, on an all-metal hot end, I don't think I would take them out because there really isn't much else holding it together. But excuse, on a non-all-metal hot end, on an all-metal hot end, the nozzle comes all the way into contact Let's get these screws out of the way. And you can see, let's unthread that. You can see that the, our hole our hole in the heat block is threaded all the way through and goes all the way through. All the way, th threads go all the way through is what I'm trying to say. And here's our heat break. So let me loosen these screws too, a little bit. So how this works is our heat break pushes into here. And then there's push, I'm sorry, pushes into here. And you'll notice the hole, it butts all the way up against it. So there is no path for the molten filament to come out should it get that high. You press it all the way down till it's tight. You use the set screws. And now if those were machined perfectly flush, there is no space for molten filament to come out. Now hopefully there is no molten filament up this high, but you know, not, not, things don't always work the way we wish they would. Now, then the heat break, 
excuse me, then the heat block screws on, and you'll notice it can go all the way down until it touches the top of the heat break, which we don't want. And you can put it on here, but what we do want, and you can see, you can see the base of it in there. What we want is we want the nozzle all the way down. We want the nozzle to thread and bottom out against it. And you'll notice I have a bit of a gap up here, and that's fine. So the screws keep it aligned. I'm just going to tighten them slightly back in here. The screws keep it aligned while the whole thing is put together. And then you put it on your machine, wrong wrench. You put it on your machine, and you heat it up to, I don't know, 20 degrees above the highest temperature you're going to print at. And if you're going to print it, and you're going to have to go into, into Arduino, and you're going to have to go into the firmware, and your, or, or Atom, whichever you use to, to um, edit your firmware, and you're going to have to adjust what the top temperature can be. I envisioned myself printing up to 300 degrees Fahrenheit, so I went in and I adjusted my max temp at 320. Heat this up to 320, tighten this down. Again, you want to make sure that there is a gap in between the base of the nozzle and the base of this. That means the by the base, I mean the base where the hex is, where it would touch the bottom of this. You want the threads, the base, how can I put that? You want the very bottom of the nozzle, at the end of the threads, you want it to butt solidly up against the bottom of the heat sink. There, you want no gap between these three pieces in the filament path. You tighten that up, you tighten it up, you know, when it's at 20 degrees above your top temperature, and then you can let it cool down, and you can pull these out if you if you so desire. I have tried it with them in and with them out, and to be honest with you, I can't see any real difference. However, they will give a path for heat to transfer from the block into, from the heat block into the cooling tower. Whether it's enough to cause any problems, I don't know, but in an all metal hot end, since it's all pitched, pinched together solidly with all metal, you can go ahead and remove them if you wish. They're currently out on my Ender 3 with this all metal hot end, but I say I have run them with them in there for a while and I haven't really noticed any, any difference. But it is one path for heat to transfer up in there. So, and the only thing, only problem you have then is if you need to take the nozzle off, it's going to drop, the, the heat block is going to be loose and you're, you're going to have to either hold it while you align it or put some pins or put the screws back in to hold it lined up while you tighten it. So, that's all that. So, another thing to touch on. The, some of these hot ends, all metal and not all metal, come with either a little sock around there or some of the ceramic fiber like in this little package, it's dirt cheap, and Creality put it on there. It does not come with the all-metal hot end. My Alpha YZ20 does not have anything on it, and I don't think the um, I don't think either of my either of my other printers do as well. The Creality ones come with it. You can also buy a little silicone boot that will go over it. Um, if you think you need that, if you think it helps, then put it on. It's dirt cheap. If you buy, if you buy it like this, buy yourself a roll of Captan tape, and you just kind of cut it to fit, and um, you just wrap it around there, and then use the Captan tape, which you can see here, to hold it on. I have tried it with them without it, and to be honest, I haven't noticed a heck of a lot of difference in performance, but um, it might help keep the the temperature in the printer or in the hot end, and maybe save you a little electricity. Although if you're printing at super high temps and you're having problems keeping or, or you were doing like what I did in that one video where I was um, trying the really big nozzles and, you're have, and your printer is having problems maintaining the temperature as you push filament through it that fast, then I suspect this might assist. I don't know for sure because I haven't tried it, but hey, you know, if you're having that kind of problems, it may be worth it. One other thing to touch on. And maybe two. One of the things I want to touch on is don't cheap out on these things. These Bowden tube fittings. Don't cheap out on them and don't cheap out on Bowden tube. Because I have found that the, some, of the cheap, some of the cheap ones work just fine. And others, they seem to have a little bit of variance in their sizes. 
and they won't stay tight they come loose you know the difference between a cheap one and a good one is probably a buck and a half so it's it's not worth cheaping out over in that regard because I have had some problems in those areas now the other thing people tell me that I want to touch on is you buy Capricorn tubing and this is Capricorn tubing you buy Capricorn tubing and you can avoid the whole all metal hot end completely because capital because um, Capricorn tubing can go to 300 C well even on Capricorn's website they say it cannot that you shouldn't push it beyond I forget 250 260 whatever I could not even get the Tallman bridge nylon to print correctly till I got to 260 to 265 while this is great tubing its sizes are uniform perfect and really wonderful I don't think it is a valid replacement for a real all-metal hot end so I think I covered everything I wanted to cover today oh um retraction when you do one of these when you put an all-metal hot end before you try to print a single thing this is important cut your retraction down to no more than one millimeter you do not want to pull the hot molten material up so far that it goes into metal and jams where as I mentioned earlier if it goes into Bowden tube it will not so cut it down to one millimeter you can play with the settings after that you can play with oilers you can do whatever you like but you know you really want to try to avoid jams because jams really suck okay that it um, I'll put that link to the one for four bucks three dollars and eighty nine cents I think it was I'll put a link below thanks to whoever posted that on the older video I'm sorry I've forgotten your name but I will give you credit if I think of it if I don't well you know what my heart's in the right place so anyway please like and subscribe please um, hit notifications and I will catch you guys in the next video have a great weekend